Thank you for staying with the big story. Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu was arrested at the Supreme Court in Nairobi this morning, this afternoon actually, of alleged corruption. She was taken to the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and later on freed on a five million shilling bond. It has been the story um, that Kenyans have been talking about. This is a very high profile case. And uh, we are privileged to be speaking to Martha Karua, who is uh, the now Kenya leader. But on this instance, we are speaking to her as a former Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister, just to pick her legal mind on what exactly is going on in the country. We also have Dan Kano Kach, who's in studio with me. Uh, Madam Karua, let me begin with you. This is a high profile case, as I did mention. This is a sitting DCJ, and their cases, this is a case uh, facing her. And the the question that comes to mind right now is that how is she supposed to conduct herself right now? There are those who are saying probably this, is, would, be, this would be the perfect time for her to probably um, resign, step aside, just so that this whole process can go through the entire um, legal system before she can even uh, get on with her work. What are your thoughts about this whole process today? Well, this is uh, totally unprecedented. And it's a new um, high on uh, the war against corruption. And I think that it is not possible for a judge of any cadre who is facing corruption charges or integrity issues to continue hearing cases. I do not know what the code of conduct of the judiciary says, but I do not think it's tenable to continue sitting when facing such serious allegations. But I'm also remembering that uh, the president said the war against graft will not spare anyone. All I would say myself, I would encourage the investigators, the DPP, to keep going and not to spare anyone. So long as they follow due process, so long as they assess and see there is sufficient evidence, let the investigators do their work, the prosecution their work, and the judges their work. And as citizens, we will support that. So from where you sit, a sitting judge going through this should not even um, consider staying in office. Um, there are those who also argue that probably the whole process was done wrongly because first of all, she's being charged in court and she's still in office. Uh, there are those who say that probably a, a process should have been initiated by the JSC, remove her from office, then after that now institute the charges. What do you think? I think we are trying to be very technical. That would mean that no serving judge or magistrate would ever be caught by the law. It's happened in other countries of the Commonwealth. It ought to happen in, um, in any country that follows the rule of law. So long as due process is followed, I do not think anybody should be spared. And those that the Constitution wants to grant immunity while they are in office, it is spelled out. So I do not think that there is anything wrong with it. And the government and the investigators must always strictly stick to due process, to the procedures that are there, but let nobody be spared. I think this country has been bleeding for too long. We needed this. That is this war against graft, uh. and we want to see the broom reaching many other places. But we also must emphasize the broom must sweep without fear or favor. It must not look as though it's targeting anyone. Everybody whose actions deserve being taken to court or investigated should be investigated. And I must say this includes people sitting as investigators at the ESCC, everywhere where allegations have been made, whether cabinet, whatever office, let people face the law. Uh, tell me, from where you sit, I mean, you have been a Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister. Assuming Philomena Mwilo decides to stay in office, from your experience, how difficult or easy will it be to carry out her duties at the, as the DCJ? It's just not tenable. 
I am not talking about uh, resigning or getting out of office, but there are procedures when one is charged with criminal charges. I was just listening to a judge granting the chairman of the Land Commission permission to go to the office. But I'm wondering, a reasonable person, what would you want to do in your office other than to pick things and wait for things to be processed? I am thinking that we must ourselves as individuals, when allegations so serious arise, one or two on their own motion, freeze work-related activities pending the investigations, pending completion of due process, and this calls upon the judiciary to expedite all graft cases, which is not the case. I saw them fixing the NYS 1, is it 1, NYS 2, two. for January next year. Yeah, it's NYS 2 for January next year. I think we must have a process where these cases are dealt with swiftly so that the accused person may know their fate because you also don't want to keep two people for too long in limbo. And then the country is able to move on. Okay. Uh uh, Mushimua, stay with me for just a couple of minutes. Um, Dan Kanukach, before I go to um, what uh, the Chief Justice David Moraga had to say with respect to corruption in the judiciary, um, from where you sit, Philomena Mwilu, Deputy Chief Justice, she's in office, there are all these charges against her. From where you sit, do you think she should probably step aside? Martha Karua says it would be untenable, um, probably almost impossible for her to continue serving as the DCJ. Linda, I do understand the sentiments of uh, Moshimiwa yeah, in, in, in terms of the complexity in uh, the Deputy Chief Justice continuing to sit. However, it must always be known that our constitution, the same constitution that created that position, indicates that she's innocent until proven guilty. Uh, such that this is just, these are just allegations. It, it, we have not reached a point where there is a conviction. So as much as we may want to, to, to throw the stones, we must be guided by this cardinal principle. And uh, a case in point is very clear that uh, we had the point where the president and the deputy president were actually gunning for office. And uh, this question was posed to the court. Are they fit? And the issues there were not even about Kenya, were not about uh, some amounts of money which were not paid in terms of taxes. The issues there were matters of, of humanity, crimes against humanity in an international court. What did our court say? The court said they are innocent until proven guilty. So yeah. if that principle was applied then, the court of appeal, the, the, the Supreme Court has not overturned it. Then it is very, very unfair for you to say that just because an allegation has been made against me, I have to step aside. Uh, how, Duncan, many, how many uh, members of parliament have cases in court? They Duncan, are elected, listen, they still maintain. We have Governor Ojamong who is still in, in, uh, in office. Uh, and I believe even if Kidero was elected, he will still have been in office. So Duncan, it is, this is, this it is, is a not personal just any issue. office. Yes? Listen, this is not just any office. This is um, the office of the Deputy Chief Justice and the, the issue of perception. Um, what would you say, perhaps step aside until your name is clear, then probably you can come back to office, uh, because perception will not go away, Duncan. The, remo the, the way of removal of a judge is very clear under our constitution. Article 168 is very clear. And if someone thinks that these particular issues, which do not amount to a bribe in terms of influencing a case, is enough for this particular individual to step aside based on the tenets of Article 168, there are clear mechanisms in terms of any person can institute this before the JSC or the JSC itself, Suomoto, can actually institute this particular motion, look at it, and if it satisfies itself that there are issues that need to be looked into, then they make the recommendations to the president. The president will suspend this particular judge, even if it is the DCJ or, or the chief justice. Without following that, these particular issues will come, will actually be, and that's why I agree with Moshimiwa. It, it will be a personal decision for her to make whether for her she thinks she's, she's okay sitting in that particular position. Mm. But it should not be tantamount to her saying that I'm guilty. So if to be... me it was an issue about a bribe in terms of influencing a case, that will be a different issue because that goes to the root of her work 
as a DCJ. But in terms of a problem you have in your house, a problem you have with your neighbor, that should not be enough okay. to actually mean that you resign without following the procedure. So it should law. be a personal decision. But then I want us to listen to listening to what the Chief Justice David Maraga had to say with respect to corruption, specifically in the judiciary. Listen in. If you have evidence of uh, corruption, the best you can do for this country it is to stand up and be counted. Give us that information and you will see what we will do. Moshimiwa Martha Karua, so that is the Chief Justice David Moraga saying if you have any um, information of a judicial officer corrupt, let us know. Uh, and today his uh, deputy is actually, was actually in court, released on a five million shilling bond. Um, what does this do to the integrity of the judicial system and the confidence that Kenyans now have in the court system in the country? It does undermine that confidence, but this is like a rite of passage. It is difficult, it may be painful, but it is necessary. There is no way we can clean up our system without holding people to account, no matter what their office. But going to the question of whether a person should step aside, mm. We were not talking about removal from office, which is complicated. The Public Officers Ethics Act does provide for somebody stepping aside. The question is whether this can apply to a constitutional office holder, who I think, broadly speaking, is a public officer because we did not have the definition of state officer the time we passed the Public Officers Ethics Act, that was before the 2010 Constitution. I think a broad re uh, reading of the laws applicable, there must be a way in which a person can be asked to step aside pending completion of the due pro process. And if they don't, the Chief Justice is the one who allocates the work. And I would be very surprised if work was to be allocated to a judge who is facing a criminal charge of whatever nature. Because a judge who is supposed to be making decisions is awaiting a decision to be made on them. It is totally morally and legally untenable. Whether even if you are innocent, you would have to wait until your innocence is confirmed or the guilt confirmed. So this is not to say that the charges against the DCJ have been proved. It's just to understand and appreciate the complexity of the matter and to just point out that it would be totally untenable. This is um, unprecedented. There have been other judges facing other charges. It is unclear whether they sat during their, the, the, the pendency of such proceedings. But I think because this is high profile, mm. now we are following what is happening. All right, Mushimiwa, um, David Maraga, he's the Chief Justice, um, and this, as I did mention, is touching on his deputy. From where you sit, um, how should he carry himself around now? Um, this is second in command uh, with the um, criminal allegations against her, of course, not proven. But from where you sit, how should David Maraga now carry himself around to inspire confidence, not just with Kenyans, but in the judicial system as well? That is where his leadership and that of the Judicial Service Commission becomes very necessary. And that is where I'm saying they must look at the laws and interpret them boldly in a way that will serve the public so that there is no mix-up while this process is going on that the DCJ, who is facing accusations, is treated in a manner that the law uh, recognizes as fair, because those are work-related matters are administrative actions, and she is entitled to fair administrative action. But at the same time, whatever the 
Chief Justice and the Judicial Service Commission do must not undermine public confidence in the judiciary and must not undermine the rule of law. And I do think that continued sitting of a judge who is facing charges would actually undermine the rule of law. Thank and I Lukács. even think that uh, even oh. when it comes to the chair of the Land Commission, a person ought not to continue with official duties until those charges, he's either cleared or otherwise of the charges. Yeah. All right, so this show would not be complete if we don't talk about the allegations that are out there, the speculation. Um, you remember when the Supreme Court nullified the election of Uhuru Kenyatta, he was visibly very upset. Let's listen to what he had to say and probably point to why Kenyatta is saying maybe this is what's happening. Listen in. Maraga na watu yake yao wa kora hao wamesema ati basi hiyo uchaguzi ipote. Sindivyo wamesema? Sasa mimi sana sio rais mutarajiwa. Mimi ni rais ambao wamekalia kiti. Tukimaliza na uchaguzi, hawa watu tutadil na wao. Dan Kano Kach, uh, purge on corruption or settling scores? Uh, Linda, that's exactly the, the sentiments that I echoed before because, uh, uh, and, and it's very bad to try to politicize it, but sometimes looking at the, the whole spectrum, you are, you, it, it, it is not far-fetched to try and look at it from that particular angle. And I will tell you that memory starts from yesterday going backwards. It does not start from 20 years backwards. So that the question that will linger into the mind of any ordinary Kenyan is uh, for how did this particular matter come up? Was there a complaint by a particular individual? Was there a complaint from a particular government office that instigated these particular investigations? Because unless they tell us that they've been looking at, the, at all these particular judges, and up to now they are at 2013, and the only person who they have found some issues in terms of her, her character and her past is the uh, Honorable DCJ, then that will lend some credence. But it will not be right to tell us you've gone up to 2013 in terms of digging out her past uh, without saying that this is a witch hunt. And that is why we are saying if the fight against corruption is actually clean, we have incidences from other government of officers who, which have just happened just the other day. We have uh, Moshimiwa's competitor. Uh, in Gishugu, she's a sitting governor, nothing has happened, yet there are all those allegations which even want to the point of, uh, of, of parliamentary committee, she has been indicted. What has happened in terms of that? So that if you just come and say that you'll target this particular individual for actions that might have happened according to the allegations in 2013, it will therefore uh, uh, be very easily interpreted like a witch hunt. And that's where we will lose the fight against corruption. Okay. We have issues which have been leveled against other high-profile uh, uh, people in the executive and even in the legislature. Nothing has happened. And one thing, Linda, you must understand is that the moment you start attacking the judiciary, which is the bedrock after all these other institutions, then we will actually start to have a very fragile country that can dissipate any time. Because right. no person will take this particular seat of judges. It is only a matter of time, if this trend continues, that judges will actually say that today, in any judgment, there's someone who will be happy, there's someone who will not be happy. Duncan? I'm sorry, I have to cut you short. Um, so, Moshimiwa Karua, just before I wrap this show up, I have received a statement from uh, Edwin Sifuna, who's the Secretary General ODM. He says, the party wishes to remind the DPP not to open its office to manipulation, especially by state and non-state actors. This is especially so when the charges it brings appear openly frivolous, lacking in substance, and reeking of political witch hunt. The long-winding statement he gave justifying his actions against the DCJ did not inspire much confidence. Quick reaction before you wrap this up. I would not take the view that has been taken by Mr. Okach and Mr. Sifuna because we have not yet had the evidence against the DCJ. I want to believe that the actions taken are taken in good faith until the contrary is proved. The DPP said he had sufficient evidence. In past actions, as Kenyans, we have lauded this particular DPP 
for his actions. I would say, let us give it time. Let us see what evidence comes out because he has said he has evidence. And then we will be able to conclude whether the charges were justified. Otherwise, we are going to hamper public officers from carrying on their duties. Secondly, the DCJ was not the only judge in the panel that nullified the president's uh, election. There were five of them. And unless, if it comes, becomes clear that this is targeting those particular judges, I want to believe the action is in good faith, just like I have believed before when other high-profile people have been arrested. We've got to give our institutions a chance to work. And I believe many Kenyans are supporting the war against graft, but like Okach, okay. I will tell the president and the law enforcement officers, make sure that your broom is not selective. Those old and resolved cases, we want to see action being taken. Okay. Otherwise, Kenyans may believe otherwise. Yeah. Great. Duncan Okach, lawyer, and of course, Mava Karua, who's a Kenya leader and former Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister. Thank you so much um, for your time and for being part of the big story. That's a big point, a good place to end it uh, with the DPP Nurdin Haji today saying evidence is sufficient, criminal proceedings should be preferred. It is painful, but it has to be done. This has been the big story. I'm Linda Gutu. We'll see you tomorrow.